The last time South Adelaide's under-18 team travelled to Richmond Oval, they walked away with their tails between their legs. The 116-point loss, one of two triple-figure beltings they copped at the hands of West Adelaide last year during what would prove a long season. The sides locked horns again at Richmond last Saturday and early on a repeat of last year's blowout looked on the cards. Nathan Armat Watkins, fresh off an under-18 record 11-goal haul in round one, put two goals on the board in the first five minutes of the match and by quarter time the Bloods' lead was north of four goals. But South, circa 2013, is showing early signs that it will be a more stubborn opponent this season. New Panthers development manager and under-18 coach Tony Bamford swung ex-Tiger Todd Button onto Armat Watkins and the youngster did a good job of curbing the dangerous forward's influence. Norlunga Football Club product Jake Anderson, down from the Panthers' reserves due to the club's increased depth, got busy in the midfield as the sides traded goals for much of the second term. Full forward Michael Ross joined the Panthers from Kangarilla during the off-season and looks a handy acquisition, bagging three goals on the day. But try as he might, South lost pace with West during the third term as the Bloods class told. West captain Jack Evans, a member of the state under-18 extended squad, was prolific all day, as was Aberfoyle Park High School bottom major Josh Vick. Kane Mulvaney has New Zealand lineage, but he looks comfortable with football in hand at Richmond, while Ryan Simister was a powerful influence in the ruck amassing 36 hitouts. Zach Bates came down from Barmer in the Riverland to join the Bloods recently and was also a member of the National Indigenous Under-16 squad, the Flying Boomerangs, last year. With leg speed like this, he's certain to catch the eye of AFL scouts this year. The Bloods blew the lead out to 46 points by three-quarter time and with South down to 19 fully fit men, another heavy loss was on the cards. But Bamford challenged his side to win the final term and his troops responded. West was deserving 42-point winners, but the Panthers walked away from Richmond with heads held high this time. Port Adelaide turned up to the bay last Saturday, still stinging from a round two loss to Sturt and eager to test themselves against the undefeated Tigers. The Magpies' intensity was on show for all to see from the outset. Their tackling was a feature which was matched by a confident bay side. Glenelg would settle the better after a hot opening few minutes with goals through Tom Hutchison and Brad Merritt. But that would spur Port into action as they set about seizing the momentum. The Magpies kick six of the next seven majors. South Augusta football recruit Elijah Highfold busy up forward with two first half goals as Port's industrious midfield looked to carry the day. Glenelg entered the match with a perfect record for a reason though. They hit back hard approaching time on in the second term. This goal from state under 18 squad member Alex Neil Bullen would trigger a Tiger flurry. The youngster missed much of last season with a foot injury, but he's now fully fit and keen to put his name up before AFL scouts. His 11 clearances and skills in traffic were worth noting. Former Port Districts junior Tom Corcoran offered Port plenty of run and carry to finish the match with seven inside 50s and four rebound 50s, and he was especially busy in the third term. Ex-North Haven youngster Nick Hales pushed his case for another Magpie Reserves call-up with a strong game of defence, as did James McIntyre. McIntyre was the best team man in Port's under-18s last season and he provided plenty of drive from down back as the Magpies kicked five unanswered goals to blow the contest apart during a powerful premiership quarter. Up forward Jack Cooper a product of the Magpies Academy, got on the end of some good work with three goals. Glenelg fired one last shot in the final quarter. Southeast country pair Tom Whelan and Jake Pitt doing their bit to lift the side. But Port had a winning break, the Magpies holding on to win by 17 points to move back into the top five. More than 10 eligible Bulldogs players suited up with the club's senior sides last weekend, meaning the under-18 team that ran on to Norwood Oval had an even more youthful look than usual. Norwood, on the other hand, had the luxury of fielding the likes of Stephen Baldasso, an overage player oozing class and already with reserves experience under his belt. On paper, this one looked like the boys against men, and so it would prove to be. Baldasso, who trained with Essendon over the summer, would finish the day with 37 possessions, eight clearances and three goals four. He would help ensure that Norwood taught the young dogs another harsh lesson, but not before Central offered some spirited early resistance. The dogs gave almost as good as they got in the first turn. The team's only overager, Tyson Earlham, busy under the packs. 
Central wingman Adam Langford showed he was fully recovered from a nasty concussion against West Adelaide a fortnight earlier, while first-year under-18 Dylan Bell battled manfully in defence. But the dogs were simply undermanned, undersized and soon to be outgunned. Norwood rammed through nine unanswered goals during the second and third terms and they were only just getting warmed up. The Redlegs will lose Cameron Tiggerman and Nathan Sermon to Ross Trevor College commitments in a fortnight, but last Saturday the pair was in full flight. Tiggerman kicked three goals and helped set up others with his forward pressure, while Sermon's athleticism was on full display. He kicked two goals and also dominated when moved into the ruck. Small defender Luke Allen is available to the Redlegs all season. The youngster's tidy ball use was on display against the Dogs and could be important to the Redlegs' premiership defence. This match was well and truly won at three-quarter time, but a ruthless Red Legs side was in no mood to ease up. They bagged another 10 goals in the final term en route to a 125-point win. Poor old Matthew Krieg's Bulldogs have now been on the end of three straight triple-figure losses. North Adelaide made seven forced changes last Saturday and faced a major test against a skilful Sturt side coming off an impressive win against Port Adelaide. But talent runs deep at prospect and the team that took to the field for the Roosters immediately set about giving a good account of itself. Golden Grove youngster Josh Ingram put North on the board less than a minute into the contest with a mark and goal. Ingram, the nephew of 286-game Western Port player of the 70s and 80s Dexter Kennedy, would go on to gather 25 disposals and kick two goals playing as a ruckman and key forward. He's a name to keep in the memory bank. Sturt had come to play as well. Sacred Heart College student Matthew Langridge seemed to be at the bottom of most of the packs as the Double Blues found their rhythm through the middle and later stages of the first term. One of the highlights of this match was the battle between the highly talented Roosters key forward Mitchell Harvey and the Double Blues former state under-16s defender Luke Andruskovic. St Peter's College student Harvey began to hold sway during the second term, but Sturt persisted with the match-up in the knowledge that Andruskovic was their best option. At the other end, Seb Weish, a member of Brenton Phillips Extended under-18 squad despite being eligible again next year, was giving Sturt an avenue to goal and the sides went to half-time all square. But after the main break, North upped the ante and quickly found Sturt wanting. Roosters captain Matthew Nye got busy, the Christian Brothers College and Paynham Norwood Union Jr. mixing his time between half-back and the midfield to great effect. Sam D. Leonardis put his name up for senior selection with a brilliant 32-possession, eight-clearance game as he and North's other midfielders gave Harvey great supply. The big forward kicked two of his seven goals during the third term as North kicked away to lead by 32 points at the final change. From there, the Roosters were never going to be headed. They kicked on for a strong 39-point win to maintain a perfect record, heading into this week's clash with West Adelaide.